Pues cuando guste, profesor. Yeah. Okay. We're okay. going to begin, okay. Georges. Uh, it is a pleasure for me to introduce uh, Professor Georges Secur. Uh, he's from the uh, professor at the Department of Decision Sciences at the University of Montreal um, in a school called uh, HEC, uh, Autitude Commercial, I think, uh, where he also is sharing uh, in game theory and management. Uh, Georges is. Uh, uh, has a uh, nice education. He began in uh, the, what is called the license or, or license in um, the University of Paris, and then the master and PhD is at the University of Montreal. Uh, he's, uh, he works mainly in uh, uh, differential games, optimal control, and operational research. Uh, he has published over 110 papers and many books, at least 10. Uh, he's also the editor-in-chief of a, uh, a journal called uh, Dynamic Games and Applications, which is the, uh, uh, the most prestigious journal in dynamic games. He's also editor, uh, associate editor of several uh, other journals. And he's a fellow of the Royal Society of Canada. Uh, it is a pleasure to have a, a real honor to have Georges with us today. Uh, thank you for being here, George. Uh, are thank you ready? You. Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Onesimo, for the invitation and for your uh, nice words. Actually, the, the honor is mine to participate in this uh, series of seminars. Uh, so what I will be doing today is to talk about uh, a, a problem that uh, kept me busy for a number of years, which is uh, the sustainability of, of cooperation in, uh, in, in dynamic game. Uh, so the outline is, uh, is as follows. I will start. Hola. Do you have a sound? Aparece que su micrófono está apagado. Okay. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. 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 Okay. Uh, sorry for that. So the the back. I'll start by giving some background on sustainability of cooperation dynamic games, and after that, I will uh, introduce the, the special class of dynamic games I'm interested in, and I will show some uh, some results. Uh, please interrupt me whenever you want. If you if you have a question or a comment, uh, you would be most welcome to to make them. Let me see if I can skip to. Yes, no. Okay. Uh, as a motivation for the class of problems I'm interested in, uh, let me make some some comments. Uh, the first one is that uh, in practice, we observe that players are signing long-term contracts. Uh, one example is contract in a company between the union and management. And also in the international arena, we see a lot of uh, agreements, whether in environment, in health, uh, in trade, etc. The very first question that uh, one may want uh, to ask himself or herself is uh, why should we commit? Why should we sign a long-term agreement instead of playing the game every day as if it were a, a static game? There are essentially two reasons for uh, having long-term contract. The first one is that uh, negotiation and uh, contracting is costly. So you want to avoid of repeating the agreement every day. You, you, you sign a, a long-term agreement. And the second point is that uh, what we are doing today has an influence on uh, what uh, we are going to get in the future. For instance, our decisions in terms of uh, pollution control now will impact uh, climate change uh, later on. So if we do not account for these types of dynamics, we, we may be losing something or we may be behaving in a very myopic way. 
So uh, on the one hand, we, we need long -term contracts. And on the other hand, we, what we have observed in practice is that some of these contracts are uh, not brought to their maturity. It means that someone at a certain moment uh, uh, would go outside the agreement. And this is called uh, in the jargon of game theory as time inconsistency. Now, the, the term uh, time consistency can be also spelled in different ways. Uh, sustainability of an agreement, dynamic individual rationality, dynamic stability, and so on and so forth. So now the $2 question is that uh, knowing that we have breakdown, uh, breakdown, sorry, can we do something? Can we design some mechanisms or some schemes in order to sustain cooperation over time. So this is what I'm interested in really uh, here. Now, uh, in dynamic games, we have a series of uh, things that have been done. For instance, one possibility is to embed the cooperative agreement by an equilibrium property. So if you have cooperation, this is the best outcome that you can get from a collective point of view. And if it is in equilibrium, this is uh, very good because it means that it is stable and you don't need any more to be concerned about the sustainability. Uh, this has been done through the use of what we call trigger strategies. So these are strategies based on past actions. And what we are doing here is to threat to punish any uh, player who can cheat on the agreement. Now, in different classes of dynamic games, we, we have theorems characterizing the conditions under which these trigger strategies would lead to a cooperative equilibrium, whether in repeated games, stochastic games, and uh, differential games. Uh, under this heading of cooperative equilibrium, we, we can use also so-called incentive strategies. So here, the idea is that the strategy of a player J it depends on the control uh, exerted by the other player. Okay, So here, what player J is saying, that depending on the control uh, uh, done by the other player, I will implement my cooperative uh, action plus this penalty term. Now, if the other guy is a gentleman, it means in this case that U3 minus J would be equal also to the cooperative uh, uh, contract and this term would be equal to zero. So the best response would be for player J to implement also the cooperative agreement. So uh, here we are talking about incentive uh, strategies and incentive equilibrium. Uh, this has been developed by uh, two game theorists from Finland in the, in the 80s and early 90s. Uh, this is an interesting framework. However, we have two issues here. One is that it cannot be generalized to more than two players. I have been trying to do this for a long time and uh, never was uh, able to get uh, any sensitive result for n players. And also there is the issue of credibility, meaning that it may happen that although I am cheated by the other partner, I still find it optimal to implement my cooperative uh, uh, part of the agreement. It means that here uh, the other player will not believe that I will uh, punish him. Another line of research was to consider so-called uh, time consistent uh, agreement. Here, the idea is very simple for each player. So J is a player and for each instant of time, well, what we want to have is that the cooperative payoff to go of, of each one of these players to dominate, at least in a weak sense, the non-cooperative payoff to go. Okay, so at each instant of time, I check if it's better for me to continue cooperation or not. And if we can find the conditions under which this will hold for any player and any time, we say that we have built a time consistent uh, uh, agreement. Now here, the comparison of the cooperative payoff to go and non-cooperative payoff to go is carried out along the optimal state trajectory, meaning that at any instant time t, the assumption is that we have been following the cooperative agreement till this instant of time. So the, this idea was brought uh, down by uh, Leon Petrosian from St. Petersburg Universities in the late uh, 70s. And there is uh, a very big literature in, in dynamic games around, around this idea. 
uh, we can generalize a little bit here the condition by uh, saying that we want cooperative payoff to go to dominate the non-cooperative payoff to go for any state trajectory and not only for the optimal state trajectory. If we are successful in doing this, we say that we have reached an agreeable uh, contract, uh, meaning that we can sustain cooperation over time. Uh, obviously, if you have agreeability, you have time consistency, but it's not uh, the, the other way around. Uh, here we have few papers because it's very, very hard to check this condition for any possible uh, state trajectory. Now, this was my, my background on uh, sustainability of, of cooperation. Uh, now, I would like to say a few words on the class of game that I'm uh, interested in, namely this class of dynamic games played over, uh, okay, dynamic games played uh, over event trees. So uh, it's clear, uh, I guess, for everyone here that uh, many problems in real life, whether they are taken from, taken from economics, engineering, management science, we have three uh, ingredients. One is that we have few agents. For instance, uh, you take a, an industry, and typically in this industry, you will have only few producers. And what each producer is doing is affecting also the payoff of the others. And this is what we call strategic interactions, uh, a main ingredient in any, in any game theory uh, problem. Now we have also some accumulation process. Uh, we are able nowadays uh, to write a paper maybe easily, not because uh, uh, what we have learned today, but because we have accumulated some, some knowledge uh, and similarly, uh, the, what matters, for instance, in terms of climate change is the pollution stock and not only the flow of pollution today. So we have systems where we have this uh, accumulation uh, process that it's important to be taken uh, into account. And also we have some uh, uncertainties, uh, either related to the state of the economy, the pandemic, uh, demand, uh, et cetera. So well, whenever we have these three ingredients uh, present, uh, I believe that uh, the right tool would be to have a stochastic dynamic game to, uh, to deal with uh, this situation. Uh, here I'm interested by the case where the stochastic uh, uh, process is given somehow. It's uncontrolled, meaning that the actions of the players cannot have an impact on the uncertainty. And uh, I am going to use uh, an event tree to, uh, to do this. So uh, the ingredients here uh, of uh, this class of games, uh, on the one hand, I need to model the stochastic process and also I need to model the, the, the game itself. Uh, so I'm assuming that uh, I have an event tree that is given, uh, have a number of periods, uh, say uh, capital T periods, and I have an exogenous stochastic process, uh, Xi T. Uh, I'm uh, limiting myself here to event trees. So any event tree has a, a root node, call it N0. And at each period T, I have a set of, uh, of nodes. And each node can uh, represent a possible sample value of the history of uh, this uh, stochastic process. Uh, meaning, in fact, uh, what? That uh, whenever I am on a particular node on the event tree, I can trace back the, the path that I needed to take from the initial node to that particular node. Uh, I will be noting by A and T, the unique ancestor of, of node and T and the event tree, and by S and T, the set of uh, successors. Okay. Uh, using the terminology in stochastic uh, programming, uh, a scenario is a path from N0 to a terminal node uh, NT. And I will be denoting by pi NT the probability of passing through uh, this node NT. So this is all what is needed to model the, the stochastic process itself. Now, in terms of uh, uh, game ingredients, uh, as usually, we need to have a set of, uh, of players. I'm assuming here that uh, we have M players. 
Now, at each node of the stochastic process, uh, player J uh, has a vector of uh, decision variables or control variables uh, that belongs to R and J. And here, what I would like to, to highlight is that these decision variables depend on the nodes. Uh, so this is one way to say that uh, the decisions are adapted to the history of the, the XI uh, process. Now, uh, as a multi-stage uh, uh, formulation, uh, uh, I introduce this idea of state uh, uh, variables. So at uh, node N NLT, we have uh, some state variables and uh, X tilde will, know, will denote the set of uh, uh, these state variables for all possible nodes for all possible periods. So think of this X tilde as a very long uh, uh, vector. Now, in terms of control variables, uh, U underscore J will denote the uh, vector of decision variables of player J, whereas U underscore without a J, it will be the, the vector of all uh, uh, players on a particular node here and LT. And U underscore bar is the big vector collecting all the decision variables of all players in all nodes in all uh, uh, we have a transition function uh, that is associated uh, uh, to each node. How do we move from uh, one node to a successor? Uh, and here we uh, can introduce this idea of state equation. So the state at uh, a node uh, NTL depends on from where I'm coming. You remember that ANTL is denoting the ancestor node of NLT and depends on the value that I observed uh, uh, in terms of uh, control in the previous node and uh, state in the uh, also previous node. Okay. So here I completed the, the multi-stage uh, uh, formulation in terms of uh, control and state uh, variables and uh, state equations. I still need to introduce uh, the reward function so at uh, any node, I can define for player J a, a reward function that depends on the state of the system and the control exerted by all players at this particular node. And here we see the strategic interaction. It means that what player J is gaining here depends not only on what he or she is doing, but also on what the other players are, are, are doing. Uh, similarly, at any terminal node, I have this uh, phi j uh, reward function. However, here it will depend only on the on the state of the of the system. Not uh, there is no more control variables here. Uh, the total discounted uh, reward of a player depend uh, depends on this very long uh, uh, vector in terms of state variables and uh, control variables. And I am assuming here that player J is optimizing the total discounted uh, reward. So lambda J is uh, the discount factor of player uh, J. And you recognize here, this is the probability of going through node NT. This is the reward at node NT, plus what I'm going uh, to get at any of the terminal uh, nodes here. Now, uh, we, we can introduce uh, any types of of, uh, of constraint constraints of games, but uh, let me here say that uh, uh, the control must live in a, in a certain uh, set, which uh, is defined by uh, this uh, capital U bar. So what is an admissible strategy? An admissible strategy is simply a strategy that is satisfying uh, uh, the control at, at any node. Uh, now, uh, this, this is uh, typically the, the way of defining a game in, uh, in multi-stage uh, format. Now, for those of us who are in dynamic games, this is the way of, of doing it. For more uh, uh, classical game theorists, they always like to see the, the game defined in normal form or strategic form. 
this is can be easily done by uh, defining the, the payoffs here uh, in terms of uh, uh, strategies. And here, of course, what we are assuming that this X tilde is uh, obtained at the unique solution of the state equation that is emanating from X zero. So this is uh, the assumption I need here, otherwise, uh, it will be uh, much more messier to deal when you when you have uh, different uh, solution to this dynamic equation. So now oh, I can introduce the uh, of strategies that uh, is going to be used here. A S adapted uh, equilibrium is uh, admissible as adapted strategy de defined uh, here, uh, such that uh, the following condition is satisfied. So what is uh, this following condition is saying simply that if all players are uh, sticking to their uh, non-equilibrium uh, decision uh, as given by this u tilde n minus j, uh, player j cannot do better but to implement also uh, her uh, uh, equilibrium, uh, equilibrium decision. So you, you see that uh, with this uh, formulation of the game in normal form and uh, this definition of, uh, of the S adapted equilibrium, where we are back to something uh, we know very much in terms of uh, game defined in strategic form. So what we have gained by doing this is that all existence and uniqueness uh, CRMs uh, will be working uh, as usual. Uh, uh, wherever you need a compact set, you need it here. Whenever you need a convex set, you need it here. Uh, so we don't want to uh, spend much effort uh, regarding existence and, uh, and uniqueness. Uh, however, here uh, I would like to, to add a comment, which is uh, important for those of you who are coming from control and dynamic game uh, uh, background. Uh, the S adapted information structure here I'm defining is a bit different from the open loop information structure in the sense that here uh, the S adapted structure is uh, means that the decisions are adapted to the nodes of the stochastic uh, process and not to the period. Because in an open loop, uh, if I wanted to implement an open loop equilibrium, I would take the expectation and at any period t I will be doing exactly the, the same thing. However, in this S adapted uh, information structure, uh, my decision will be adapted uh, to the nodes. And this is important uh, to mention. Uh, maybe a few back, uh, background regarding this class of games. Uh, actually, this class of game was somehow invented because in my PhD thesis and in some work with uh, Alain Ori and Yves Smers, we, we were simply solving a practical uh, problem, which was to deal with the European natural gas market, where you have some sellers, uh, Algeria, uh, Netherlands, Norway, at, at that time, USSR, selling their gas in uh, different uh, uh, regions. And uh, what the countries were doing is to sign uh, long-term contracts uh, however, we had some stochasticity that is emanating from the price of oil. So what we needed to do here is to, to adapt the, the contract to the evolution of price of oil. And this is the reason why we uh, defined the, the, the game in this, uh, in this manner, namely a dynamic game played over an event tree. Uh, in that case, the, the control variables were investments and the quantity that you are selling to each market, whereas the state variables are reserves and uh, uh, production capacity. So here I'm giving on the slide some uh, uh, background in terms of uh, why, why we started working in, in, in this area. I would be very happy to answer some questions. However, for the sake of time, I will... Uh, I will move forward now to what I want uh, to do. So, so far I said few words regarding uh, uh, sustainability of cooperation in a dynamic game and I introduced this uh, class of game. So now let me put the two things together. 
suppose that you, you have a community of players that who are interested in uh, cooperating. And let us suppose for a minute that uh, cooperation means uh, joint optimization. Yes, uh, so all players will be maximizing the sum of their uh, uh, payoff uh, throughout the, the planning horizon, uh, which is typically here uh, taken to be, to be finite. Now, once uh, we have this as a pre-play uh, agreement, uh, this is a relatively simple optimization problem to solve. So once we, we solve this uh, optimization problem, what, what we are going to get is the result in terms of what each player has to do in order to implement cooperation. Okay? So this vector will be uh, the solution of, of this optimization problem. Okay? Uh, now, this is the contract. So if, if we want to collaborate, this is what each player should uh, uh, implement. Now, once we implement the, the cooperative uh, contract, uh, we simply uh, obtain the total cooperative outcome that the whole society can achieve, assuming that we are uh, going to cooperate throughout all planning horizon. Now, uh, the solution of this optimization problem is also giving me the cooperative state trajectory. So I know now at each node what would be the value of the state, assuming that cooperation is in force. Okay. Now, as in any cooperative game, uh, we have to do two things. One is to optimize for the whole collectivity. And second, once we obtain the total cooperative outcome, we have to find a way to allocate it among the different uh, participants. So here, what we are after is a very, very simple idea. Uh, we want to implement a sharing of the total cooperative outcome such that at any node, each player will find it rational to play the subgame cooperatively rather than switching to non-cooperation. So it means what? At any instant, any node, I will compare what I can get by continuing cooperation or switching to non-cooperation. If I find it better for me to continue cooperation, and it is the case for all players, it means that we were successful in implementing this node consistent solution. Now, if we think about this basic idea algorithmically, uh, we say that we need to do the following. First, to define a cooperative game uh, uh, and to compute the, uh, the characteristic function values, which mean I have to be specific in terms of what each sub uh, set of players can get uh, uh, in the cooperative game. Uh, after that, we can choose a solution to this cooperative game. For instance, it can be a Shapley value or core. I will say a few words uh, on that. And this will give me an imputation, meaning, meaning that if cooperation is enforced for the total planning horizon, now we know what each player should get in this cooperative solution, meaning his or her share in this total cooperative outcome. Now I, I need to decentralize this over node uh, in order to ensure that uh, cooperation will be sustained. So I have to compute for each node cooperative and non-cooperative payoff, payoffs to go. And once I have this, uh, the only piece, uh, missing piece is to develop what we call an imputation distribution procedure that is node consistent. Uh, and this is what I will be uh, introducing now. So uh, node consistency requires considering pairs in all subgames. Now, all subgames are going to start along the cooperative state trajectory. Why? Because I am looking at the points where there is a breakdown. So if I am at this particular node, it means that breaks, break, breakdowns did not happen yet. So it means we have been following the, the cooperative trajectory. Now, once I have this cooperative trajectory, I can compute the cooperative payoff to go to any player. 
So I simply plug in the objective function of this player j and I compute what this player j can get by continuing cooperation, meaning that everyone is implementing the cooperative agreement and we are starting from the cooperative uh, state trajectory. I can also compute what this player J would gain if instead of playing the game cooperatively from this node onward, from NLT till the end, we will be playing the game non-cooperatively. You, you note here that uh, the strategy is going to be different. However, the starting point is the same here because of this assumption that players have been cooperating uh, so far. Now, node consistency means that for any player, any node during the whole duration of the game, this cooperative payoff to go must dominate the non-cooperative payoff to go, okay? So if I can find uh, uh, this, uh, in a, uh, sustain these inequalities, I am done because it means that uh, I have uh, been able to, 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 to do it uh, in a consistent way. Now here, please note that the initial Nash that you computed uh, at any period onward is not the same that uh, we are going to compute at, at, at a new node, uh, simply because uh, we are not following Nash trajectory, but we are following the cooperative state trajectory. This, this is a... Uh, important uh, comment for game theorists, uh, but let me not spend uh, much time on it. So now we need to develop uh, some ideas related to, to cooperative uh, uh, games. Uh, the, the tools I am using are the, the classical tools. So we have a set of players. I have to introduce a new object here, which is a coalition. So a coalition is simply a subset of the set of players. And now I need to be specific. What is the payoff of each of this uh, uh, coalition in any uh, starting uh, uh, subgame? So to do this, we introduce what we call a, a characteristic function. So this characteristic function is a mapping from all possible subsets into, into R and will give me what uh, would be the, the, the payoff of this uh, coalition. Now, of course, in order to compute the payoff of this coalition, I have to say something about what the other members of the games are, are, are doing. So this uh, led uh, game theorists to develop different uh, approaches to characteristic function. For instance, in the alpha and uh, beta approaches, uh, the idea that uh, the coalition is playing like one player and all left out players are making an anti-coalition whose only aim is to minimize the payoff of the, of the coalition. Whereas you can take any other uh, assumptions here. Uh, everything I am going to, to do uh, is applicable for any definition of characteristic function. Okay? Now, once we know how to compute the, the payoff of different uh, uh, coalitions, we can introduce the set of imputations. So what is the set of imputation? This is a vector. We have uh, as many entries as players. And this vector is telling each player what he can get in, in a cooperative solution. Now to uh, qualify as an imputation, what I'm giving player J should be at least equal what player A can get by acting alone. So this is a, a rational individually, uh, uh, individual uh, incentive. Otherwise, uh, why would player J co cooperate if he can get more by acting alone? And also the sum of what I'm allocating should be equal to what the whole society can produce, meaning by computing the characteristic function value, but for the grand uh, coalition. Now, once I have this, uh, this is a set. So from this set, I can uh, either select one value or, or a subset. Uh, the most famous uh, uh, cooperative solution in, in cooperative games is the, the Shapley value. 
So what the Shapley value is doing is uh, to give a weighted sum. So here uh, M is the number of players in the whole game and G is the number of players in the, in the coalition. So it's a weighted sum of what the value would be with uh, player J and what would happen if I exclude player J from the coalition. So this difference is giving what player J is bringing to the coalition. And I'm taking for all coalitions uh, to which player J may uh, join. And this is giving the Shapley value of player J. Now, what I'm computing here is the Shapley value for the whole game, meaning starting from the initial position, namely the initial node and the initial state. Now, Shapley value is an imputation, meaning that what I'm giving to all players is equal to characteristic function value for the whole set M. And you remember when I maximized the payoff of the, all the play, the sum, I obtained this W. So this W star is uh, equal to the value of the characteristic function value of uh, the set of players. And this is equal to the Shapley value. Now I can decentralize it to, and compute the Shapley value for any intermediate node. Now, suppose uh, that I have done this. Now I know what each player is entitled to get in the whole game. Now I would like to do the following thing. I would like to take this payoff and to decentralize it over node in a way such that I can get uh, uh, node consistency. So to do this, I'm in the last uh, step in my algorithm is to introduce a so-called imputation distribution procedure. So this is a time function, a node function, if you wish, that uh, depends on the, uh, on the nodes. And I have to define it for all nodes, all periods, all player. And we say that this IDP is node consistent if at any position we have the following. What I'm giving to player J, uh, what, uh, uh, what player J is entitled to obtain in his Shapley value at this particular node should be larger or equal to what he can get by switching to, to non-cooperation. And if this is true, I, I am done because it means that everyone is happy with uh, cooperation and I would have achieved uh, my objective of having uh, cooperation sustained. Uh, I need, of course, to uh, have feasibility from an accountant, uh, accounting point of view, it means what? It means what? This is what player J is entitled to receive in the whole game. Now, for uh, this allocation to be uh, feasible, it means what I have been giving to player J from the start till period T minus one by using this imputation uh, uh, function plus what I will be giving him in terms of Shapley value after this t minus one should be consistent. Uh, I should, the sum should be equal exactly to what player J is uh, entitled to get in the cooperative game. If this is true, it means that uh, uh, the imputation distribution procedure is not, not node consistent. And it means that sustainability of cooperation is at hand. Now, the only missing piece is to give you a formula for this uh, beta j. And this formula is given in the, in the following uh, uh, CRM. Uh, it says that what I should pay player j at any node is uh, her Shapley value uh, corresponding to the subgame starting in this node minus the expected payoff of the Shapley value in any of the subsequent uh, uh, nodes. So uh, this is uh, simply this formula. Uh, and uh, at uh, the terminal node is exactly the Shapley value at any node. Now, uh, this formula is always computable. It always uh, exists. And uh, we know that the Shapley value is a singleton in the set uh, of imputation. So it means that uh, once I have defined the cooperative game, I can always find 
uh, not only a single solution to this cooperative game, but I can define also a uh, payment mechanism that ensures that cooperation will be sustained over time. Uh, here, uh, this allocation is individually rational and, and feasible. Uh, so uh, this means that uh, any cooperative uh, gain, the so, uh, cooperation can be sustained for as long as the, the players accept uh, the Shapley value and uh, the mechanism that is implemented. A uh, few words regarding the, the core, the, the, the Shapley value uh, selects one imputation in the, in the set Y, whereas the core uh, uh, selects a, a subset and the core can be, can be empty. Uh, I think uh, for the sake of time, I'm going to skip this, but uh, the message here is that everything that I have done for the Shapley value, I can do it for the core. However, uh, here it's a bit more complicated because instead of uh, manipulating uh, single values, I will be manipulating uh, sets. Okay, so this can be done uh, easily uh, uh, in some, some extent. Anyway, uh, if someone is interested, uh, I can give the, the references. Here, I would like to, to highlight a few things. Uh, first of all, that uh, the results that uh, I have been showing are independent of the functional forms. So I don't need to have a linear this or a quadratic that. I can do it for any functional form, for any choice of the characteristic function that can be done. Here, the only constraint uh, I need is, of course, I need to have uh, existence and uniqueness of, uh, of Nash equilibrium. If I don't have uh, uniqueness, it means that for any possible uh, Nash equilibrium, I have to implement this uh, node consistent uh, uh, solution. Uh, now, of course, uh, if the core is uh, empty, I can do nothing about it, but uh, this problem has been opened for uh, 70 years. Uh, it, uh, it's not part of the agenda here to, to solve it. Uh, now, as a conclusion here, that node consistency, the, the concept I have been dealing with, is somehow a, a necessary condition for sustainability, but it's not sufficient. Uh, why? Because uh, it, it is not an equilibrium in itself. Uh, here, what I'm considering is really a case where Either I have a, a cooperation or cooperation will break down completely. Right. Uh, I, I am not looking at the case where uh, what would happen, for instance, if one player uh, goes outside uh, cooperation. Uh, recently, relatively recently, US uh, went out of the Paris Agreement for uh, climate change, uh, thanks to Trump. Uh, but still the Paris Agreement continues. Uh, it, it, it does not, uh, uh, it has not been eliminated. Uh, so this is a kind of situation I'm not considering here. Uh, uh, okay. So uh, this is what I had to say regarding uh, node consistency. I don't know if you have any questions before I move to, to something else. No, it's okay. Okay. So now instead of having uh, node consistency, what I would like to do is to build a solution that is uh, a cooperative solution that is also in equilibrium. Uh, as I mentioned in the introduction, this is the best of two worlds because cooperation is the best solution, collectively speaking, and equilibrium is stable in the sense that uh, is, is giving me stability because no player will find it uh, optimal to deviate from the cooperative solution. So if I can do it, it would be uh, fantastic. So uh, here everything is as before. And the question I'm asking myself that can we support strategically uh, cooperation, meaning to have it as an equilibrium. Now, uh, in the class of game I am considering, we have a finite horizon uh, uh, because we, does not uh, help to have an infinite uh, 
uh, event tree. So I need to, to have a finite horizon. So in a finite horizon game, we know uh, that uh, no, we cannot support cooperation uh, by an equilibrium. Why? Because at uh, the last period, it will be always in the best interest of the players to uh, deviate from the cooperative solution. And by using uh, backward induction, we can show that we cannot implement a cooperative solution in, uh, in this sense in a finite horizon game. Uh, however, we, we can get a so-called uh, epsilon cooperative equilibrium, meaning that if, if the players are willing to leave something on the table, yes, we can we can sustain equilibrium, uh, we can sustain cooperation by an equilibrium, and this is what I'm going uh, uh, to do. So here the idea is that uh, if uh, a player is deviating from cooperation and all other players will punish this deviator by minimaxing her payoff. So this is a kind of pre-play arrangement. And this is what has been done in all this uh, uh, literature on uh, cooperative equilibrium. Now, here, what is important to, to note is that history is going to matter. So it's not, it's not only uh, what is happening at the, the actual state, so what we are going to use um, uh, are non-Markovian uh, uh, strategies here. A few uh, definitions here uh, uh, quickly. So now I need to define what I mean by a path. Uh, and this is a path emanating from initial node to this particular node. And what is the history of uh, the last node I am hitting is simply the what has been realized till the ancestor node. So I know what the players uh, played in node N0, the following ones, and so on, so forth. And this is the history of this particular node. And uh, we define here a behavior strategy. So this is a, a mapping from the history into the control set of each player. So. Uh, reading the history, each player uh, knows what to do at any possible uh, possible possible node, uh, and uh, we can now write the, the payoff of any player uh, uh, in the game starting at uh, sub game starting at uh, node and t as a function of this behavior strategy as a function of sigma. Anyway, these are some technical details, not interesting. Thing, uh, necessarily for everyone here. So let me go uh, a bit quickly. Uh, what is an epsilon equilibrium? Uh, an epsilon equilibrium is an equilibrium such that when all players are, uh, when all pl player implementing their uh, uh, strategy sigma j, uh, they will get a larger uh, payoff than when a player is deviating. So this would be the definition of an equilibrium when epsilon is equal to zero. However, as I said, in a cooperative uh, uh, game where we have finite uh, planning horizon, we cannot ensure this inequality. So I need to add here an epsilon. And uh, a perfect epsilon equilibrium, uh, I have something similar to here. However, it has to work for all possible uh, uh, histories. So uh, to make it simple here, the, the question I'm asking myself is, is the following. Suppose that I have a finite horizon game and I have a, a game defined over uh, an event tree. Suppose that I want to embed the cooperative solution by an equilibrium property. I know that I cannot do it in this finite horizon unless I am, have a tolerance and think about this epsilon is a tolerance. What should I do in order to, to implement uh, uh, such cooperative equilibrium? So here the idea is, is the following. If we observe that uh, a player has deviated, all other players will be punishing this player uh, in a certain way. Now, the, the idea of this punishment here, it has to be somehow uh, harsh enough in order to this player to think twice before deviating. 
Now, what this player is going uh, to, to do is to compare, of course, the payoff that uh, he can get by uh, deviating from the equilibrium and to the punishment uh, that uh, the other players will be uh, incurring on him. So in order to see what, what kind of uh, class of strategies will be used uh, to punish, here I need to uh, talk about uh, grim trigger behavior strategy. So this is a bit complicated to, to read for you uh, quickly, but the, the, the explanation is very easy. So each player will implement exactly what we have agreed upon in the cooperative agreement. And this is the meaning of this star here. If the history, the whole history till this particular node has been precisely the cooperative history. It means that till that node, nobody has cheated on the agreement. Now, if I observe that someone has cheated, I will switch as player J to my punishing uh, strategy. So this is the, the very basic uh, idea. Now, uh, given this, what I still need to do is to compute this, this epsilon. So from where this epsilon is coming. Now, look at uh, uh, the payoff of player J. So payoff of player J is given by what? At node NTL, player J is trying to deviate. So deviating means that instead of playing uh, her part of the agreement, this player is cheating and implementing something else. So thanks to this cheating here, there is a differential in what this player can get between the payoff here and the payoff here. Now, this is obviously positive typically because by cheating locally, you can get, uh, you can get better. However, uh, in the long term, what is going to happen is that the other players are going to implement their punishing strategy. So from this node and LT onward, what you will be getting as player J is the payoff corresponding to the continuation of the game in non-cooperative manner while the other players are implementing their punishing strategy. And you have to compare it to what you would have obtained by continuing cooperation. And this is for all nodes succeeding this one particular one and in terminal mode. So this is the gain that player J can get by deviating from cooperation at this particular node. Uh, and Professor what is Sakur? Yes, yes, please yes, go there is, there is one question in the chat. Uh, it, it says uh, that by David Gonzalez, it says that if you could give an example or an application where I where uh, we can okay. see the notes. Uh, okay, so, so suppose that you, you have an agreement between the different uh, uh, members of OPEC uh, that they go to Vienna every six months and they sign an agreement about the quotas that each player has to implement for the next six months. Now, for the next six months, of course, demand for oil can be high, can be low, or can be middle. So it means that you can have different levels of, of demand. And this is what is meant by uh, uh, this representation as an event tree. And now, depending on the realization of this demand, each player would have to implement the quantity uh, to, to, of production that was uh, implemented in the agreement. And this is uh, what, what uh, the quotas are, are telling the, the members of, uh, of, of OPEC. Now, suppose that one um, country is cheating. Instead of uh, uh, producing 1 million barrel per day, this country is producing 1.1 million barrel per day. Now, it will take some time for the other members to detect this cheating. But once this uh, cheating is detect detected, it means that all the players, instead of producing their quotas that are in the agreement, they will start playing the game non-cooperatively. By doing this, the prices will go down. Now, when the prices are going down, you are hurting yourself as a punisher 
But what you want to do is to punish sufficiently harshly the guy who deviated in order to deter deviation. So this is, a, I think, an interesting example we see in the, the oil market where you have a dynamic game, you have a, a cartel, so we have strategic interaction, and nobody can predict the uh, uh, demand for oil for the next month, the next two months, etc. So it will vary depending on the weather conditions. Uh, it will vary depending on what... Uh, uh, other players than, uh, that are not members of OPEC are doing, so including Russia and Mexico, which are parameters for, for the OPEC. So, uh, I hope this clarified a little bit what we, what we have in mind here. Uh, is it clear? Uh, yes, I, I think so. Nice, nice example, uh, in particular because nowadays the oil price is dropping down very fast. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, because of some uh, demand uh, parameters. I mean, it will depend very much on uh, Thank you. supply and demand. Most welcome. So uh, uh, what I need to do here is to perform all this analysis. And once I get this epsilon, I, I can show that there exists a perfect epsilon equilibrium in trigger strategies with this particular payoff where I get this epsilon. Now, of course, is, if this epsilon is extremely large, it means that Layers need to leave a lot of money on the table in order to sustain uh, the equilibrium argument. Uh, do I still have a couple of minutes so I can illustrate uh, with an example what I'm saying, or you want me to conclude because it's uh, already 11 uh, in Mexico time? Uh, I think you have a few minutes, uh, Georges. Okay, so then let me illustrate what I have done here with a couple of, with a simple example. So this is the simplest ex possible example. So you have three players countries and you have a pollution game. So at each node, uh, each country is polluting a, a certain quantity and this pollution is due to production processes. So we have a pollution dynamics at each node uh, the level of uh, accumulated pollution will be equal to the sum of what all players have polluted in the antecedent node, uh, plus what remains from previous pollution. So this delta is called the uh, natural rate of absorption. So this is what mother nature can capture of as CO2, uh, either by uh, forest or oceans. Uh, so what remains in the atmosphere is one minus uh, this delta. Uh, and I want to illustrate the theory I've been developing uh, by assuming that this delta is stochastic. We, we don't know precisely how much oceans can absorb uh, uh, CO2. So let me again uh, simplify uh, my life and yours by saying that we have only two possible values. So, uh, this uh, delta can take uh, delta lower uh, bar or delta upper bar with this inequality. Now, suppose that each country has a damage cost. This is what we call environmental damage cost in terms of health, in terms of whatever you want. And uh, again, suppose that is uh, quadratic uh, in, the, in the pollution uh, uh, stock. And there is an emission cost, uh, which is given by, by, by this form. Okay, so E is a given parameter and uh, gamma G, J is a given parameter. Now, let me consider a very simple uh, binary tree here. So I start from this node, I can go uh, to the left or to the right, and from each node to the left and to the right. And suppose that what players want to do is to minimize the total discounted uh, uh, cost. Okay, so this would be like a, an environmental. Uh, agreement between the, the, the three players. So now uh, I do all what I have done before and I get this, this epsilon. So what is the interpretation here? Uh, we have three periods, period uh, zero, one, and two. In period one, we have two possible nodes. Okay? And uh, in period two, we have uh, two possible uh, nodes and we are ending here with uh, period three with eight possible uh, so what are we getting here as a result? It says that at initial node, nobody is deviating from the copy. Now in period one, 
player one has a, an interest in deviating because player one can do better here by deviating from the agreement than sticking to the agreement. Whereas player two and player three uh, have epsilon equal to zero. However, as expected in the last period, everyone was deviate because we know it. This is a general uh, uh, result. So I'm getting different uh, epsilon value. So what is the highest uh, epsilon here is, is this one. And uh, assuming that we can bribe uh, this player by, by this amount, if we hit uh, uh, this, this node and this player by this amount and this player by that amount, we can sustain uh, equilibrium in the sense that uh, is defined uh, is defined here. So it means that players have to leave some money on the table in order for cooperation to continue. Uh, and this is uh, true in any in any finite horizon game. Now, if I enlarge the game to a tree with one thousand uh, nodes. Now we see that for the first uh, six periods, nobody is interested in deviating from uh, uh, cooperation. Of course, at the end we'll have deviation, but this tells me, for instance, that if countries uh, uh, meet in Paris to sign the climate change agreement, although they are having uh, maybe a, a planning horizon of 10 periods, that they should put in the system some mechanism in order to revise the agreement. Because from what I'm getting here, that in period seven, the agreement will not be fully sustained. So maybe after six periods, we need to revisit uh, uh, this agreement and to change some of its clauses uh, in order to build a new sustained agreement. And this reasoning here is giving us uh, somehow a hint about the longevity or longevity of, a, of an agreement. Uh, this happened, for instance, uh, with NAFTA between Mexico, US, and Canada. And uh, it happened with uh, World Trade Organization. It happens also within a company between the union and management. Uh, you, you sign an agreement for a number of years, but you should put in the agreement some clauses that, allows, uh, that allow the participants to revisit uh, the agreement and to make some corrections whenever it is uh, it is needed. Okay, so le let me stop here. Uh, thank you again for uh, your very kind invitation and thank you for uh, for listening. I would be now more than happy to take questions if uh, 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 you have any. Uh, let me let me give you my uh, how can I write my email? Uh, uh, Maybe you can select the chat. Yes. Uh, Actually, there is a, another question in there. Uh, yes, just let me check something. What is better uh, chat, Anesimo? Como? I don't hear. Can you see the chat? The yeah, chat yeah. window? Uh, no, I don't see it anymore. Uh, uh, it's be below. I don't know. It depends on your computer and your system. No, I, I, I was seeing it, but now I'm not seeing it anymore. Uh, oh, anyway, yeah. uh, Georges, uh, th there's someone in the audience uh, asking if you could recommend some work on applications in engineering of cooperative game theory. Uh, I will do it if, if uh, the person can send me an email and uh, I will send her uh, today or tomorrow a few, uh, few uh, Beatriz, references. Pon tu, pon tu correo ahí en el, o mándaselo al profesor. No, yo, yo, yo puedo, puedo poner mi correo, pero no sé cómo hacerlo con, con este. Uh, ah, okay, now I see the chat. Yes. Uh, uh, can you see the they just got uh, an email? How, uh, okay. Are you able to write in the? Uh, I am writing. Just tell me if. Uh,
can okay. can you see now now my uh, my email address yes okay so uh, wh whoever would like to discuss anything or have some references please just uh, drop me an email and i would be more than happy to, to respond george uh, george you're, you're i have a question Sure, please go ahead. Uh, in 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 the standard uh, game theory, you have a, a dynamic programming equations, um, this kind of tools, you know, to do uh, computations. Mm -hmm. In this case, you can do something similar. Uh, yes, if if you want to, uh, uh, here, here you, you can do it. Uh, uh, using the Hamiltonian's uh, tool because uh, it's much easier to, to introduce different kinds of, uh, of constraints, whether you have constraints on your action and even some, some joint constraints. Now, if you want to do it uh, using a dynamic programming uh, approach, uh, here you have to do it uh, for each path because you, you have different paths on the event tree. So for each one of these paths, you have to compute uh, uh, feedback equilibrium using dynamic programming uh, one by one. But if you want to, to aggregate uh, everything and uh, using the S adapted information structure that I uh, introduced, uh, you, you have to do through the, the using the Hamiltonian. So. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, sounds, uh, sounds uh, logical. Yeah. But, but anyway, uh, uh, we have a paper uh, uh, on computation uh, as adapted uh, information structure. Uh, uh, I can send you the paper if you, if you are interested. Uh, yeah, it appeared in, automa yeah. in Automatic a couple of years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hola, Daniel, como estas? Hola, bien, tú? Uh, uh, bien, bien. Hola a todos. So, you, are, you, are, you, are, uh, uh, you are following my example and having a bird because you want to protest ag against uh, COVID? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, right now I'm, I'm at the office, so I, I sure need to protest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I have another question. Uh, Related. Yes, so, please go, go, go ahead, go ahead. Does it make any sense to consider randomness on the three, on the three, on the three? Sorry. Well, what, what kind of randomness here you are? Uh, well, I, I think maybe if you use uh, random trees or something like that. Uh, the the whole uh, theory has not been developed for that. Uh, what I've been doing uh, recently, and we had made some progress, is the case where uh, the the tree is given. It means that you know the the nodes. However, the probability transitions are not evaluated in the same way by the different players. So for instance, uh, you, you may think that uh, the probability of having a high demand uh, next period for you is 0.3, I think it's 0.5, but, but still we need to, to cooperate. How do we manage with this? This we have been uh, able to obtain some result by aggregating uh, different beliefs of different players. Uh, however, the case that uh, you are referring to uh, no, uh, no, no, we did not uh, really worked on, but this could be a very good idea if you have a, a bright PhD student uh, <laughs> to go in this direction. <laughs> yeah. okay. Cheers. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, what, what we have done previously also is to look at uh, the continuous uh, case, meaning that uh, you don't have a, you have a continuous uh, process, but uh, honestly, uh, although it has some theoretical interest, I don't see how in practice you can implement it, maybe in finance where, where you have uh, uh, trading every second, every millisecond, but uh, in the kind of applications I'm interested in, uh, continuous time, uh, 
uh, stochastic process, uh, I could not find really interesting application. But in that case, the, the three, what is the, the similar? No, that, no the, there is no, there is not here. You, you have to introduce a usual stochastic process evolving continuously the and to the, to the yeah. far instance. Yes. Okay. Um, the rest. Thank you. Most welcome. Any other questions, comments? No. No. Let me see the chat. No. No, no, no. No more questions. Okay, so thank you. Thank you again. And, uh, good luck. Okay, please, uh, everyone, uh, on mute your microphone and we can give a big applause to professor sakur for his nice talk thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you, thank you very much and i hope to have the opportunity to see you in mexico in montreal or somewhere else soon when this pandemic will will end and resume our normal life there, there is just one uh, suggestion uh, yes, it would be a good idea if you send some uh, references, perhaps with the sure. organizers, sure. and they, they can send sure. it. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I will. Uh, I, I will. I will prepare a list of uh, uh, references, and maybe the easiest way is to send it to Hector and uh, Hector. Thank uh, you. Sure. 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 Uh, Besides, sorry. if you are able to to send us uh, your presentation. Your slides, we can. Of also. course, of course. I, I will do uh, all that if not this afternoon, tomorrow morning for sure. Thank you, Georges. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you for, so for accepting the invitation. Uh, and most, most and welcome. For all of you, if you want to, to join us at 4 p.m., 4 p.m. is the last uh, session. That, 